Hi, everyone. I'll just give everyone a few minutes to pop in. Um, as you arrive, I just wanted to start by sharing some positivity instead of, you know, I know there's a lot of negativity often on this group, which I understand everyone wants to just connect and share their opinions. And a lot of people are worried and concerned, but as you're studying, I just want you to see some DMs I got in the last week. Some of them are even just today or yesterday of people passing, getting really high scores. So I just wanted to share this and show you that it's possible that you can pass, you can do really well. This person even got a 95. We have some high 80s, 88s, 86 over here. Um, so it's possible you're given some great uh, resources and hopefully this is one of them to help you. So if there's any questions throughout this video, just let me know. So tonight I just wanted to talk about some calculations and two most important ones to know are direct proportion and inverse square law and knowing the difference of what they are and when to use them. So which question would you use direct proportion for and when would you use inverse square law? So we will mainly use direct proportions when we're trying to find new field sizes at different distances or SSDs. So the beam is naturally in shape of a triangle. As SSD increases or as the distance increases, the width of the triangle increases in proportion to that distance. So that means that divergence is predictable. Whenever we're talking about field size and distance, we will use a direct proportion. A common analogy that's used is the flashlight. So as you shine a flashlight against the wall, if you're really close to the wall, the circle will be really small. As you pull the flashlight further away, the circle will then get bigger. So it's the same concept with radiation, how the beam is projected. We can also use direct proportion with magnification as well. So there is a magnification formula, but magnification is based on direct proportions. And inverse square law. So that's when we're talking about dose and distance. So that's the key to remember. Anytime a question has dose and distance, we're going to use the inverse square law. But dose can come up in multiple ways. So it can be the dose itself in centigrade or gray, the term intensity, output, or dose rate might show up in a question. Those all will signify inverse square law formulas. So again, as the beam is diverging, it's spreading out. And as distance is increasing, it's spreading out more. So the intensity that the x-rays or the photons will have is lessened because of this inverse square law factor. Another time we'll use inverse square law is when we're determining overdose or underdose. And these are typically worded like the patient was accidentally treated at the wrong distance. So what was the dose? So we'll see those questions come up and it's an inverse square question. It's just kind of worked a little bit differently. Another type of question that's inverse square law is the Maynard F. So as we're changing distances, uh, the PDD will be changing. I'm not going over that today, but just know that that's a type of inverse square. But as a general rule of thumb, we want to use the inverse square law if we ever see a question with dose and distance specifically. So let's just go through some examples and work through them. This will be the best way to explain it. So the first example reads, for an SAD treatment, the SSD reads 86 centimeters. The field size on the patient's skin measures eight by eight centimeters. What is the field size at the ISO center? So what kind of question is this? If anyone can let me know in the chat. 
What kind of question do you think you would use for this? Or what kind of equation? Right, direct proportion. Perfect. Great job. So let's look at how to solve it. So remember we said that direct proportions are like similar triangles. We're comparing the beam as it, um, as the SSC is changing and the beam expands. So first we're given the field size at the skin surface. So I drew it out as two triangles at the skin surface, which reads 86 centimeters, it's eight by eight. Now we wanna find the field size at isocenter, which is 100 cm SAD, or that's just your distance. So if we're going further out from the original SSD, the beam is going to be wider. So your field size is going to be larger. So it's always good to think about this before you actually solve because you wanna see if your answer is in line with the theory behind it, because you don't wanna just get a number, see that answer and move on. You wanna make sure that you are checking yourself as well. It's like a second check. Now there is sometimes confusion with this equation uh, for two reasons. One being the word SSD. Now just think of these as distances. So our first field size is at the patient's skin surface. So SSD is used. The second field size happens to be at isocenter, which is technically SAD, but it's okay. We'll still use that as our distance. So it should maybe be field size over distance equals field size over distance. If that helps to clarify anything. The other thing is that you can use this equation in multiple ways. So you can also write it out with your field sizes on the same side as the equal sign. So field size one over field size two is equal to SSD one over SSD two or distance two. So you can write it either way, whatever you're most comfortable with. I prefer it um, the way that we see on the screen first but that doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. You can do things multiple ways, um, especially math problems, I should say. So we'll set up this direct proportion. I like to use everything that we know first on the one side. So we know the first field size is eight by eight. So we just need to use one field length at 86. We're looking for the field size where the distance is 100. From here, you will cross multiply. So eight times 100 equals 86X. And that will be 800, oops, I forgot the X. Then we will divide both sides by 86 to get x by itself. So when we do that, we get 800 divided by 86 is 9.3. And I hope that you're doing this along with me so it's more practice. Maybe you're solving a little bit quicker and so that you can get the answer and check yourself too to so make sure you're doing it right. So one thing to note here is that our original field size is a square, eight by eight. So we really only have to perform this one time and our answer would be 9.3 by 9.3, because it's a square. And that checks out, right? We said the field size should be larger for the second field and it is. And that makes sense to the theory behind it. So it's a good thing that we check that. If this was a rectangle, say it was um, eight by 10, for example, we would have to do this equation twice. So we would do the eight, then the next time, instead of eight, we would put 10. So it would be 10 times 100 
equals 86 X. And that would be the field length. The answer would be the field length for um, the 10 size. So it would be 9.3. And then we'll do 10, um, 10 times 100 divided by 86. And that would be 11.6. So that answer would be 9.3, sorry, write it here, 9.3 by 11.6 as an example. So you would have to do this twice, but because it's a square, our final answer is just 9.3. So hopefully that didn't confuse you too much, but I just wanted to give you that example. Okay, great. So now that that one is clear, Let's go to another question. If you have questions as I'm going, you can always write them in the chat. But the next question, an SAD treatment at midplane, the field size measures eight by 12 at ISO, which is 100 cm. What is the field size at the skin surface if the patient separation is 26? So what kind of formula would you say this equation would need or this question would need? And you can just write that in the chat. Right, this is also a direct proportion question. Okay. So this takes multiple steps before we can actually use our direct proportion formula. So we need to find the SSD. So we know that the second distance or we know one of the distances I should say is 100, but we need to find the other distance so that we can solve. So we have our field size at one distance, and we need to find the second distance so that we can find the second field size. So it takes a little bit of extra work. So when we see the term midplane, how can we solve for SSD? What does midplane really mean? Let me know in the chat what midplane means. Mid depth, perfect. Yeah, it's like the middle of the patient. So if we have mid plane, that means if this circle is like an axial slice of the patient, that isocenter is gonna be directly in the middle. Exactly. So what we're gonna do is divide our total separation, 26 by two. So 26 divided by two is 13, perfect. So that means that the distance from the skin surface to ISO or that midplane is 13 centimeters. Now, how can we find SSD with this information? This point is 100. So if we take 100 and subtract 13, we'll get our SSD reading. We're not converting anything, but rather we're finding the distance at the skin surface if 100 is at the middle of the patient. So that's our important first step that we need to take. So now we have our first distance as 100 and our second as 87. Great, so let me know if there's any questions with that. Now that we have this information, we can solve for the S, uh, the second field size. So we said that midplane is 100, so our field size is eight by 12 at 100, and our SSD is 87. So we can solve just like we did before. We're going to do eight over 100, is equal to x over 87. 
we cross multiply, we'll get eight times 87, which I get 696 is equal to 100 X. Then we divide both sides by 100 to get X by itself. And I get 6.96. And now we have to do this twice because this is a rectangle, not a square. So instead of the eight, we'll just replace that with 12. So it'll be 12 over 100 is equal to X over 87. So we'll do 12 times 87 now, divided by 100 to get X by itself. And I get X is equal to 10.4. Oops. So we didn't check our theory at first, right? So we started with this field size at 100. Now we're looking for it closer to the source. So technically, because we have this triangle beam divergence, our field size should be smaller. And it does check out. Even if we rounded it to 7 by 10, it's smaller than the original field size. So we did great. We, we did the right math. If we did it in the incorrect way, it might not show appropriately and um, it wouldn't check out. So it's good to double check. Is everyone getting the same answers? Uh, anyone getting something wrong or getting stuck somewhere with these questions? Okay. So let's move on to the next. Our next example is what is the dose rate at 150 centimeters from the source if it is 320 centigrade per minute at 100 cm from the source? So what kind of equation would you use here? Right, this would be inverse square now because we said dose and distance, perfect. Dose and distance is the inverse square law. In this scenario, we're talking about the dose rate. So that is an example of dose. Perfect. So again, like any math, this can be, uh, this equation can be used in, in many ways. So it's really depends on your comfort level, what you studied the most, what you feel the most comfortable remembering. Um, this is what I like to use. So I1 or intensity one over intensity two is equal to D2 distance two over distance one squared. So whenever we are using inverse square law, the um, distances have to be squared. Now, the important thing is to note where to place which um, factor. So if you notice, I1 is on the numerator or on top on the left side of the equal sign, where it's on the bottom on the right side. And the same thing for um, the second one. So I2 is on the bottom, now D2 is on the top. So that makes it inverse because they're opposite. Whereas direct proportion, I1 would, would have been on the top and D1 um, would be on the top as well. Um, unfortunately, that's not like the best example since uh, we shouldn't be using intensity and distance in direct proportion. But just seeing that these numbers are on the opposite side of the fraction, that shows you inverse square loss. If you can't fully remember the formula, just knowing that concept will help. So now let's plug in the factors. So we know that our first dose rate is 320 centigrade per minute. So that would be I1. And that's at 100 cm 
which is our D1. I2 is unknown, that's what we're looking for. But D2 is 150. So now we can just really plug in. So 320 over X is equal to 150 over 100. And then we're gonna square. Before we actually solve for X, let me know in the chat, do you think that the dose rate is going to be a a greater number or a smaller number for I2. D1 is 100 and D2 is 150. So if our distance is increasing, what's gonna happen with our intensity? <clears throat> yeah, our intensity is actually going to decrease because of inverse square law. So our distance is increasing, so then the intensity is going to decrease because it's, it's further away, exactly. So again, it's good to think about that ahead of time so that we can solve appropriately and make sure that our question or answer is correct. Great, thank you all for participating. So now we can solve. We wanna solve um, what's in the parentheses first. So we'll do 150 over 100. I get 1.5 and then it's really important to remember to square it and I get 2.25. So 320 over X is equal to 2.25. So you can do this multiple ways. You can make this a fraction so that you can do um, cross multiply or you can just simply multiply this by X and you'll get 320 equals 225x, then divided by 225. So I mean, 320 divided by 2.25 is equal to x. So 320 divided by that, I get 142.2. So right, our intensity is less because we increase our distance. Exactly, if you double your distance, you quarter your dose. So you increase in distance always lowers your dose. That's well said, perfect. Does this make sense to everyone? All right, so we'll step it up a notch here. You do one where we have to find the distances. Um, let me see. I can make it up off the top of my head. <laughs> um, that might be more challenging actually, but we could try it. So, at what distance? Would the dose rate be, I'm just making up numbers now, 200 centigrade per minute if the dose rate is, wow, this would be, I think this might be a little challenging. See, if the dose rate is, I don't know, 100 centigrade at, oh, per minute at, 100 cm FSB. Does that sound like what you're looking for? You always need to know three factors out of the four. So you can know, you have to know at least one of the distances. <clears throat> okay, let's try to solve it together. Just, and we'll use green. So in this case, I1, we can do if the dose rate is 100 and 
I1 is 100 and I2 is, oops, 200. Then we said, hmm, 200 goes with X and then 100 squared. So I think what I would do next is break down the squared. So it'd be 100 over 200 is equal to X squared over 100 squared. And then I would solve for everything I know. So 100 divided by 200 is gonna be 0 0.5 is equal to X squared over 100 squared is 10,000. I'm running out of room here. So now 10, that will mu multiply both sides by 10,000. So 10,000 times 0. 0.5 is 5,000. It's equal to X squared, oops. Now to get both sides by itself, we'd have to take the square root. And I would get X equals 70.7. Let's double check to make sure I did that right. So the dose rate is 100 at 100. Now we are increasing our distance. So then our dose, Oh, I'm sorry, no work. Hold on. We are doubling our dose rate. So then our distance must be getting closer. And it is, so 70 is closer than 100. So it looks like we did it right. Does that look like what you were looking for? It's a little challenging. I haven't really seen any questions on this as far as like reviews go. I would doubt that they would ask you something along these lines. I think they would ask you more for the dose, knowing the distances, but I'm glad that we had that challenge. All right. <clears throat> Clearing that. All right, I think this is the last example. So a treatment plan calls for the patient to be set up at 100 SSD. However, the patient is accidentally treated at 109 SSD. So what is the dose error? What kind of equation would you use here? We're talking about dose error. So what would you think to use? Right, this is, a, this is an example of inverse square law. I would just, I use my own twist to inverse square law. So hopefully this helps because sometimes it gets tricky on which distance to put where. So I'm going to show you what my trick is. Um, I don't know how scientific this is, but it works and you don't have to remember or memorize anything, but you need to know that this is an inverse square law. So when you're using inverse square law, what do we um, square? Do we square the dose or the distance? So when we use inverse square law, what are we, um, what are we squaring? Distance, perfect. So it's really important to still do that even though we're kind of solving um, a part of the question. Perfect. Okay, so the plan calls for the patient to be set up at 100. So they were supposed to be treated at 100, but instead they were set up to 109. So they were mistreated, unfortunately. Now we have to figure out what the dose error was. So if they were treated at 109 instead of 100, are they gonna be overdosed or underdosed? Mm 
Will a patient be underdosed or overdosed? Yeah, they're gonna be underdosed. So we're treating the patient further away. So say here's our source, beam comes out like this. They're supposed to be treated at 100, but they're accidentally treated at 109. So they're going to be underdosed because of the, the they're being treated further away. Exactly. Now, when I saw these, so it, knowing that it's gonna be underdosed, we want to set up this formula so the fraction gets you an answer less than one. Okay, so when we want a question or the answer to be less than one, we want the smaller number on top. So in this case, we'll put 100 on the top or in the numerator, and then 109 in the bottom or denominator and square them. That's an important part to remember. <clears throat> so I'll put this in my calculator. 100 over 109 is 0.917, square it, and I get 0.84. We can stop it there. So 0.84 is a decimal. If we multiply this by 100%, we'll get 84%. So the patient only received 84% of the dose that they were intended to receive. So how can we tell what the dose error was? What is the difference between what they were supposed to get and what they actually got? So this is the difference between 100% of the dose, the actual intended dose, and what they received. So in this case, you can simply subtract 100 minus 84 is 16%. So this patient was underdosed by 16%. If we wanna take it a step further, say the patient was supposed to receive 180 centigrade. You can now multiply this by 0.84 and figure out what they received, or you can plug this into a complete inverse square problem or formula. But this is just another way to do it. So 180 times 0.84 would be 151.2 mu. I'm sorry, centigrade. So this all just proves that the patient was treated further away, they're underdosed, they receive less dose than they should have received. So questions like this can be just, what is the percent error? What is, uh, or they can ask you, what is the dose? So either way, that's a form of inverse square law. Now we can try one the other way, um, just to show you what I mean. And just to like kind of clarify my my way of thinking here. So let's try a new example. So they were supposed to be treated at 100. Instead, they were treated at 85 CM SSD. So I think you know where I'm going here. If they were treated at 85 instead of 100, were they overdose or underdose? They're being treated closer to the source, right? Therefore it's an overdose. So they're gonna receive more dose this way, perfect. Now, if they're gonna be overdose, we wanna set up our fraction so that's a number greater than one. So when it's a number greater than one, we want the larger number on top, which we said was 100. Then our smaller number will be in the denominator and we need to square this. So when I do this, it's 100 divided by 85, and then we square it, I get 1.38. And it's hard to say, you know, with the registry and how they might round something, 
I would suggest when you're calculating in your calendar uh, calculator, um, keeping the fract uh, keeping the decimals as long as you can until you're almost ready to solve, so you have the most accurate number. Uh, I use the parentheses feature a lot to make sure that I'm not like writing things out and cutting numbers short. Instead, I'm using the full value as long as I can. So anyways, with that being said, 1.38 is a decimal. If we need to multiply it by the 100%, and we get 138%. So we know that this patient was overdosed by 38%, because we need to know the difference between 138 and 100%. And that's a difference of 38%. Now, what if you forgot to square it? If you didn't square it, 100 divided by 85 would be 117%. So it's a pretty significant change in your answer. And a good trick question would probably give you the answer without the square and with the square as well. I know I do that in my test sometimes. Um, because we want to make sure you're remembering to square it. So it might try to trick you with that. So just make sure you're remembering to square your distances for any of these dose and inverse square law problems. Does that make sense, everyone? Instead of worrying about SSD1 over SSD2 or SSD2 over SSD1 and memorizing a specific formula for these like overdose questions, more so thinking about the theory behind it, if they're being overdosed or underdosed, and what's going to get you that answer that reflects the actual, um, I guess, theory. I prefer just to do it this way because I can never remember which one's supposed to be on top for these types of questions. So hopefully it helps you as well. But if you have questions with that, let me know too. Okay. So that's all I have for examples for tonight. Um, if you want to have another session with different types of math problems or different subjects altogether, let me know. I'm happy to do these um, when I can. But before we go, I just want to, to remind you for the registry what kind of calculators you might have. So they will give you this standard calculator, um, like a handheld one typically, centers have that but they will give you both on the computer. So you'll have access to the scientific one as well, but you actually have to use your mouse and click the numbers instead of physically holding it. But you have that um, option. So you do have both calculators. And lastly, most of these um, equations came from my calculations manual. Depending on where you're at in your studies, if you haven't used it yet, I created this book based on tutoring sessions. So I went over a lot of these questions with students in the past. So I created this book on like how I would explain it just like I explained it now. Hopefully it breaks it down a little bit easier than a lot of those other physics books that are kind of hard to understand and read. So um, I hope that you are enjoying it. If you are using it, if you haven't yet, check it out. It's on Amazon. Um, you can just type in this uh, the title into Amazon or my name and it comes up pretty quickly. Otherwise, um, if you want to look at my online review course for studying, I do have math in there as well as every other section for the content specifications. That's rttexamprep.com. And if you're interested in tutoring, you can type in rttexamprep.com slash tutoring. And there's like a whole form to fill out because I want to just know exactly what you are looking for. And this way we can set you up with a tutor that is available to help you with what you need. Um, I will look through these comments once I'm done, but this is what I have for you tonight and we can always set up another session if needed. But thank you all for attending and participating. I hope you had fun like I did. <laughs>